Welcome to Charles Darwin University graduation. Congratulations on your achievement. Now you stand ready to create a new world of possibilities. This is your CDU graduation. Graduands, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the academic procession is about to commence. Please stand and remain standing until the national anthem has been sung. Please be seated. The Honourable Nari Arkit, Minister for International Education, Mr. Bill Yan, MLA, distinguished guests, graduates, family and friends. To commence proceedings today, I would like to invite Auntie Billawara Lee to deliver our welcome to country. Ministers, Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, Darandara Menangurkuwa Bachiwa, Nayana Nalingalwara Lee, Dumreligi Tu Golomerajan, Yajana Bachiwa, Na, 
So good morning, everyone. My name is Auntie Billawara Lee. Happy for you to call me Auntie B. I am a senior elder of the Larrakia Nation and the Larrakia Academic and Residence for Charles Darwin University. I am a senior member of the, the, the very large local Cabillo family, one of the eight family groups that make up the Larrakia Nation. My name, Billawara, means red-tailed black cockatoo. It is an ancestral spirit being that brings about change and it is my totem, my heart dreaming. I am really very happy to welcome you to Gula Medijin, Larrakia country, and I thank you for the respect you show us, the traditional custodians of the land we gather on today. We are the traditional custodians of the land and waters of the Greater Darwin region, and although our lands extend up to 50 kilometres inland, we are saltwater people. I acknowledge and pay my respects to other dignitaries, fellow Larrakia people, families, friends, colleagues and other elders that are here today. To my brothers and sisters from other First Nations, a very warm welcome from my heart. I recognise the strength of spirit and depth of knowledge that exists in both the elders of the past and present, and I know the rich tapestry of the dreamings still runs strong in our mind, bodies and spirits. Australian First Nations are the oldest continuous surviving civilisation on earth and the Larrakee people were the first sovereign nation of the mainland and islands west of the Great of Darwin region. And our sovereignty is a spiritual certainty. The ancestral ties between our mother and the earth, her sister mother nature and ourselves, comes from the dream time and continues now in the dreaming time. Our sovereignty has never been ceded or extinguished. Our environment was our school and universities. We are the oldest surviving teachers, researchers, healers, astronomers, diplomats, and any other roles in a vibrant society that you can imagine. And we have done this for eons, for more than 65,000 years. Ours is older than all the other acknowledged ancient civilization on this planet, including the Mesopotamians, the ancient Chinese, Indian, and Egyptian cultures. One day I hope that Australia, if not the world, celebrates this enduring deep, rich history and they understand and learn from our ancient wisdoms. Remember, our history is your history. I want to give a really heartfelt graduations to our graduates. You have passed all the hurdles to be here today, your graduation ceremony. I feel that over the years of your study, together with staff of the university, you have woven a very strong spiritual denala a dilly bag or a net, in which you carry your hopes, dreams and knowledge. You are about to enter the most uncertain and thrilling period of your life. The stories you are about to live are the ones you will tell your children and grandchildren one day. The power lies within you and you have the ability to change the way you think and act. Find ways around the obstacles in your life and never forget that and never give up. Charles Darwin University has given you the knowledge and the tools to be a master craftsperson. So continue to make us proud and never forget that if you ever need us, we will be here for you and you will always remain a member of the CDU family. So it is on that note, it is my privilege on behalf of my elders past and present to welcome you all to Gwialwa Daraniki, our land. Welcome to my saltwater home of great food friendly people, beautiful beaches, spectacular sunsets, and the most amazing lightning storms. Larry Key countries like a pearl with many layers of different peoples of different cultures, all living and loving in this deeply spiritual place. And in the beginning, there was one culture, the Larry Key culture. Now here on my traditional lands, we have over a hundred different ethnic groups, all living in harmony. Now my country's like a quilt with each segment, a beautiful picture, of the many different cultures living here, sewn together by people's unique stories in the Larrakia song lines. And now you are here on my traditional lands and we can sew your unique story into our quilt. And from the moment you arrived in Darwin or you were born here, you have been immersed in Larrakia ancestral energy. And as you walk across our land, I pray to the ancestors to make your journey in my country a safe and rewarding one and that they protect you while you are here. All that I ask in return is that you walk softly on Mother Earth and treat her with love and respect as the Larrakee people do. 
And if you are walking softly and you are listening carefully, you will hear the deep, rich, ancient voices of my ancestors singing the song lines across this beautiful land and waters I call home. And when you leave Larrakee countries, country, always remember the Larrakee people and that you have travelled the sacred lands of my ancestors. So in these really difficult times, Milama Dumra, be well. Mamak Bachiwa. Thank you. Thank you, Auntie B. It's always so wonderful to hear you welcome us to this beautiful country. Um, and on behalf of the university community and everyone present today, I would also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this ceremony is taking place, the Larrakia people, pay my respect to elders past, present and emerging, and extend that respect to other First Nations people here today. I'd now like to invite the Vice-Chancellor and President, Professor Scott Bowman AO, to deliver your welcome address. That's not good. That's not good at all. Let's do it again. You've got to give him a clap. He's the boss. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We'll just rewind. Now you know what's expected. I now invite my boss, the Vice Chancellor and President, Professor Scott Bowman AO, to deliver the welcome address. <laughs> oh, thank you. That was so unexpected. Thank you for that. Chancellor, I've been away in the UK and in that mad land called Europe uh, for uh, the last few weeks and I landed back in Darwin last Thursday and the phone pinged and there was a message there from uh, Auntie Billawarra saying welcome back to Larrakia country. And that was such a lovely message, and it, it just felt so good to be back in this incredible place, to be on Larrakia land. Thank you very much for that. And I really want to echo the words you've, you've said there. And I was talking to our First Nations graduates last night, and I was saying, you know, if, I, if we were the University of Cairo, we'd be really showing off this morning and saying, you know, we have got this ancient civilization, look at those pyramids, they're incredible, they're ancient, and how wonderful is that? But when you look at those pyramids, those pyramids are four and a half thousand years old. Yes, impressive, yep, great. We have rock paintings in Arnhem Land that have been dated 17 and a half thousand years old. And I'm sure there's paintings even older than that. Pyramids, four and a half thousand. Our wonderful indigenous people have been here for 60,000 years, and there are paintings 17 and a half thousand years. People have been gathering on this spot for 60,000 years to do what we're doing this morning, to celebrate success, celebrate people uh, getting to a level of proficiency. So thank you very much for that welcome. I do need uh, Auntie Billawarra to find some time to come and speak to you, because I need to know something about protocol. Uh, now, I'm not a, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, just talk amongst yourselves. I just want to talk to, because this is a secret and we're not supposed to say anything, but the Council of the University has recently uh, honoured Auntie Billawarra with a doctorate of the university. Please don't say anything, because there has to be an official announcement. Don't let the Chancellor know that I've mentioned this. Uh, but I need to know whether I now have to call you Dr. Auntie or Auntie Doctor. So I will be coming to see you about that soon. Look, we've got everything in place for a fantastic uh, graduation. We had the Hogwarts music when we came in that just went on and on and on. How wonderful is that? I've got my graduation boots on. Oh, come on. Look at those. I've got my big jug of gin and tonic to see me through the graduation. I need your help, though. I need a couple of things from uh, the audience and our graduates. One, uh, I do need a mobile phone to go off halfway through the ceremony. 
um, so that we can all look at that person and shake our heads and feel very superior because we remember to turn ours off, so we need that. And we need a kid to scream and cry and make a lot of noise during the graduation. And that's a serious point. If you have got children here and they start to make some noise or start crying, please don't feel that you have to leave. Phil, don't, we are a family university, we all want to celebrate, and kids making a bit of noise, we love it, because all of us back here, when we hear kids making a bit of noise, we know we've got some business coming through in the future. <laughs> now, the other thing I need from the graduates, I need one of you to slip over and fall over as you're walking across the red carpet. At least one. If, you don't, if that doesn't happen, then none of you are graduated and you've got to start your courses again. So somewhere way up there, in, up there, there's uh, the last person to come over. If no one else has fallen over, it's your duty. <laughs> OK, look, congratulations to our graduates. Uh, you've done an incredible job. We know that our, uh, our students, many of them do it tough. We're not like one of those knobby universities down south where everyone goes on, they go there after they've graduated from school and they have a lovely three years sitting on campus, doing their studies and sitting around talking about philosophy. Many of our students have a very different journey through university. They're uh, students that are doing their study by distance. Uh, they're students that have got family responsibilities, that are working full time, that may be looking after elderly relatives. These are an incredible bunch of people. Congratulations. Well done. <laughs> There are, however, two groups of people that have done it even harder than you. One, the staff, who have had to put up with every excuse imaginable to why your essays and assignments were in late. So well done to you lot. But the real people I feel for are you. How, what have you had to go through over the last few years with this lot going through universities? How much whinging and moaning have you had to put up with? How many times have you had to open your wallet up to support them? I, look, you, you lot, get up, stand up. If you've got a funny hat on, st no, sorry, stand up. Graduates, stand up. Face your supporters, friends, and family, and you give them a big round of applause. OK, don't milk it. Sit down. OK, so we are here to celebrate. We're here to celebrate these incredible people graduating from the university. Graduating, we're not like, again, we're not like most universities where everyone is just on this parallel track of doing degrees. We have, our university goes off in every direction. It goes off in a perpendicular as well as a parallel way. We've got people graduating this morning in the trades with vocational qualifications. We've got people getting professional degrees. We've got people getting masters. And we've got an incredible bunch of research students. And it is wonderful to be here with Menzies today to also celebrate our students that have, have got their PhD through Menzies. The university and Menzies together are a powerhouse in Australian research. You won't believe this, but you can go and look it up. We are, per head of staff, the most research productive university in Australia. If, if you take our staff and look at how much research, then divide it by the number of staff out, this bunch behind, you wouldn't think to look at them, but they are the most research productive group of staff in Australia. We beat all of those, I shouldn't keep saying knobby universities, those prestigious universities. These lot outperform Sydney University, Melbourne University, ANU for research productivity. Well done. 
So you are graduating from an absolutely fantastic university. Let's celebrate their success today. We don't want to, you know, sometimes I look around at some graduations at other years, and it's more like a funeral. This is a wedding. This is a wedding without the strange uncle and all the fights. This, this is a wedding. Let's celebrate. It's a chance for you to get your own back. When they walk across the stage, make a lot of noise, scream out their names, embarrass the heck out of them, and let's have a really good time, because this is graduation. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chancellor. Uh, we're now going to move on to the formal part of the ceremony and start by presenting an honorary award uh, that's been approved by the Charles Darwin University Council. Chancellor, I have the honour to present Mr. John Charles Plimsoll Horsell to you. In recognition of their outstanding contributions, Council has determined that John should be awarded the honorary degree of Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa. John Horswell has dedicated his life to the study and development of forensic science in Australia. In 1973, he moved to Darwin from Sydney's inner western suburbs and served as a member of the Northern Territory Police Force for 16 years. It was during this time that John's relationship with the university began when it was still known as the Darwin Community College. John undertook the creation and development of the first certificate in forensic science, Although other courses had touched on the subject matter, this was the first tertiary course designated to forensic science and was a turning point for forensic programs in Australia. In 1985, following his lengthy service to the Northern Territory Police Force, John received multiple scholarships, including the Northern Territory University Planning Authority Grant and the Queen Elizabeth II Jubilee Award to study for a Master of Science in Forensic Science at the University of Strathclyde in Glasgow, Scotland. After completing his master's, John returned to Australia and became a member of the Australian Federal Police in the Forensic Services Division during 1989. In 1990, John worked in conjunction with the AFP and the Canberra Institute of Technology to implement a forensic science diploma program across Australia. John was an integral part of developing the curriculum. This course was the first forensic science program offered throughout Australia. John is currently the Chief Execu Executive Officer of Approved Group International and lives in Malaysia. He has been published widely in forensic science literature and has received numerous awards and accolades for his contribution to the industry, both in Australia and internationally. Chancellor, in recognition of his outstanding contribution to the development of tertiary education in the Northern Territory in the field of forensic science, Charles Darwin University Council awards John Charles Plimsoll Horswell the title Honorary Doctor of Science. Congratulations, John. It's now time for today's occasional address. Dr. Sean Taylor has over 20 years' experience working in the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health sector. He began his career as an Indigenous health worker in the mid-90s in his home community of Murray Island in the eastern Torres Strait region of Queensland and has since worked in a range of academic and research roles and clinical practice settings across Australia. Dr. Taylor currently works in a joint role as the Executive Director Aboriginal Health and Diversity at the Northern Territory Health Top End and Deputy Director of Indigenous Leadership and Engagement at the Menzies School of Health Research. In this role, Dr. Taylor helps to translate research into practice, lead Aboriginal health and diversity governance across the NT's Top End, Big Rivers and East Arnhem regions, and provide support and assistance to health professionals, 
doctoral candidates and researchers. In 2005, Dr. Taylor was one of the first three Bachelor of Nursing Science students to graduate from James Cook University's Thursday Island campus. He later completed a graduate certificate in health, in diabetes management and education, a Bachelor of Health Science with honors, and a Doctor of Public Health, which focused on improving diabetes care and management in regional and remote healthcare settings. Dr. Taylor currently participates in a broad range of health committees, locally and nationally, and currently chairs the NT Health Top End, Big River, and East Arnhem Partnering and Consumer Committee, the Communicating for Safety Committee, the Aboriginal Health Committee, Aboriginal Health Partnership Committee, Multicultural Committee, LGBTQIA plus Committee, and the Menzies School of Health Research Reconciliation Action Plan Committee. Graduates, distinguished guests, family and friends, please welcome to the stage Dr. Sean Taylor. <laughs> Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, Auntie Billawara Lee, special guests, ladies and gentlemen, and most of all, graduates. Before I begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional landowners on the lands that were gathered here to this morning and pay my respects to the Larrakia people, and I pay my respects to their elders, past and present. It is both an honour and a privilege to be here today to give the occasional address. I congratulate you on the significant accomplishment of the completion of your degrees. You and your families should be very proud. Graduations are a very special occasion and provide us the opportunity to reflect on the past, the present and the future. Today, you are joining the ranks of Special Club, the Charles Darwin alumni, and it's a very special occasion. I have not had the opportunity to study at Charles Darwin University, however, provided mentorships to students who study at Charles Darwin University and, Char and Menzies School of Health Research. You are now part of an elite, the people that society looks for leadership for the solutions to many problems that we face as a community. Let me take you on my professional journey. I remember when I was 19 years old in my home community of Murray Island, or more commonly known as Murray Island, where the Merriam people live in the eastern Torres Strait region of Queensland. I turn, turning up to my first day at work as a trainee Indigenous health worker, little did I know where this journey or the direction would take me. I completed a diploma of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander primary health care and later became the health centre manager Enlisted in the Australian Army Reserve, the Charlie Company 51st Battalion, the Far North Queensland Regiment. After seven years of working at Murray Island Health Centre and various primary health cares across the Torres Strait region, witnessing how poorly controlled diabetes can affect the population, I relocated to Thursday Island and completed a Bachelor of Nursing Science at James Cook University Thursday Island campus. However, before leaving Murray Island to relocate to Thursday Island, Elders of the Murray Island community came together to impart their words of wisdom to me and gave me advice and encouragement. Uncle Ron Day, who was the chairman at the time of the Murray Island Council and one of my mentors and close relatives who I spent considerable time with, gave me a Murray Island blessing, the same Murray Island blessing that gave to the late Eddie Koike Mabo from Murray Island who challenged the High Courts of Australia and removed the myth of terra nullius from the Australian doctrine. I quote, Emetu karapolipuli akremda, which literally means I am determined to accomplish my goal and nothing whatsoever is going to change my mind or plans. He later mentions to me, and I quote, never forget there will be more mountains to climb after you succeed, the first one. It will be difficult, but certainly not impossible. Uncle Alfred Passy, another family member, said to me, and I quote, follow the stars and the stars will guide you home. After my graduation ceremony on Thursday Island, I relocated to mainland Australia, as I was successful in a nursing position at Cairns Base Hospital. Although I was not given the opportunity to practice as a registered nurse at Thursday Island Hospital or within the Torres Strait and Northern Peninsula area, I was shattered, not knowing why I was not accepted to practice as a nurse at Thursday Island Hospital. However, I progressed. I rang my parents for a chat like I always do, and I said, I'm planning a road trip to Alice Springs to work at the Alice Springs Hospital for three months as a dialysis nurse. 
Can I leave my belongings in your storage shed? Both parents agreed. The next chapter began. After 10 months, not three months, working at Alice Springs Hospital, I applied for a job back in Cairns. I was unsuccessful. I rang my father, complaining, as one does. My father advised me, and I quote, everything happens for a reason, Sean. I reflected, decided to drive to Adelaide. I worked at different levels in healthcare in Adelaide and different parts of South Australia, focusing on diabetes, renal disease, and public health, and completed the Graduate Certificate of Health Science, Diabetes Management and Education at Flinders University. Later, I met Professor Robin McDermott, a professor of public health, and at the time, the Pro Vice Chancellor and Vice President in the Division of Health Science at the University of South Australia. That was the first time I met Robin after 10 years since we last met at Murray Island. Robin and I, Robin asked me, why are you so far away from home? And I said to Robin, I want to gain knowledge in chronic disease with a public health view. Robin and I concluded we would apply for an NHMRC grant when the opportunity was available and take the project back to Cape York and Torres Strait if successful. Months passed since meeting Robin McDermott and I drove to Sydney via the Great Ocean Road to uptake a position at the University of Sydney School of Public Health to manage a research project led by Professor Jonathan Craig. This project opened the doors to research, the research world. Although I led health, uh, public health projects when I was back at Mare Island, I applied the same methodology I learned back in the Torres Strait. And in this new chapter of my professional line in Sydney, 19 months passed, and during this time, I established good friends, networks, colleagues, and found love for the first time, and lived with a partner. Professor Reverend McDermott rang me as I was walk walking home from work to share the exciting news that we were successful in our NHMRC grant titled Getting Better at Chronic Care in Rural and Remote Communities. With joy and excitement, Robin and I both congratulated each other, and Robin advised I had to relocate in one month. I paused. I said to Robin, I have made Sydney my home. Robin quickly responded, and I quote, what about your people in the Torres Strait? What about everything you have wanted to achieve and succeed in your career? I requested to have time to process. Robin agreed. I walked home with mixed feelings and reflected on the journey since leaving Murray Island. I slept on that thought. I woke up determined to proceed with my new chapter. I submitted my resignation, advised Robin that I would relocate to Cairns and not Adelaide. Robin agreed. I enrolled in a Bachelor of Health Science in Honours at the University of South Australia, gave my partner the option to relocate to Cairns or remain in Sydney. My partner agreed to relocate to Cairns with me. Farewell, Sydney. After five years road trip, which was only meant to be three months, I returned to Cairns via Adelaide, the same path I began the road trip in 2006. Hello, Cairns. I returned to far north Queensland, aiming to take the research project back to Murray Island. However, the funding could only take me as far as Bardu Island. After one year of returning to Cairns, my partner returned back to France, and a very close family member um, had passed away. Both situations was an emotional roller coaster. I progressed in my journey, working day and night to implement the research project and collect data for my honours degree. I graduated from South Australia and enrolled in a Doctor of Public Health at James Cook University. I chose to do a Doctor of Public Health over a Doctor of Philosophy to gain my goal in my professional career and was to work at the World Health Organization. The Doctor of Public Health degree is one of the prescribed qualifications with uh, five years of an executive role in the health service. Robin applied for further funding, which we were successful. This grant took me back to Murray Island after 10 years. I returned back to the initial health center where my be career began more confident, experienced, university educated, clinically and professionally enhanced. Uncle Alfred Passy gave me a big hug and said quietly in my ears and hugged me, I quote, the stars have guided you home. During my doc doctorate, I completed internships at the University of California, San Diego, Behavioral Diabetes Institute, the University of Toronto, Baiting and Best Diabetes Center, and the Duisburg Essen University, Management of Department of Professional Communication and electronic media and social media. After graduation in 2017, I joined the Torres and Cape Hospital Health Service executive team as the newly appointed Principal at Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Health Advisor. 
However, in 2018, I relocated to Darwin and established the Aboriginal Health and Diversity Doc Directorate for Top End Health Service in partnership with Menzies School of Health Research. Graduands, I conclude my speech with a quote by Vicky Silvers entitled, Follow Your Destiny Wherever It Leads You. And I quote, There comes a time in your life when you realize that if you stand still, you will remain at this point forever. You realize that if you fall and stay down, life will pass you by. Life circumstances are not always what you might wish them to be. The pattern of life does not necessarily go as you plan. Beyond the, any understanding, you may at times be led in different directions that you never imagined, dreamed, or designed. Yet, if you had never put any effort into choosing a path or tried to carry out your dream, then perhaps you will have no direction at all. Rather than wondering about or questioning the direction your life has taken, accept the fact that there's a path here for you now. Shake off the whys and what's if and rid yourself of confusion. Whatever was is in the past. Whatever is is what's important. The past is a brief reflection. The future is yet to be realized. Today is here. Walk your path one step at a time with courage, faith, and determination. Keep your head up, cast your dreams to the stars. Soon your steps will become firm and your footing will be solid again. A path that you never imagined will become the most comfortable direction you could ever hope to follow. Keep belief in yourself and walk into your new journey. You'll find it magnificent, spectacular, and beyond your wildest imaginations. Graduands, I wish you all the best in your future endeavors and congrat congratulate every one of you for reaching this milestone in your professional career. Thank you. Sean, thank you very much. We're very glad that those stars guided you all the way to our graduation stage today. And please accept these flowers as a token of our appreciation. Today's musical presentation will be I'll Be There by Jess Glynn, performed by Phoebe Olivia. Phoebe studied singing with CDU lecturer in voice Paolo Fabrice through the Center for Youth and Community Music from a time that she was a very young girl. Phoebe then started her career in the performing arts, writing her own songs and producing her own music, which became well known to the Darwin audience thanks to record label Skinny Fish. Please give Phoebe a very warm welcome to the stage. When all the tears are rolling down your face And it feels like yours was the only heart to break When you come back home and all the lights are out And you're getting used to no one else being around Oh, I'll be there When you need a little love, I've got a little love to share I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come through You'll never be alone, I'll be there for you I'll be there, yeah, yeah, I'll be there for you I'll be there, yeah, yeah, I'll be there for you Oh, I say, yeah, yeah, I've got enough love for two You'll never be alone, I'll be there for you when it's Friday night and the drinks don't work the same You're alone with yourself and there's no one else to blame And you still can't find the rhythm of your heart And you feel your spirit fading in the dark Oh, I'll be there When you need a little love, I've got a little love to share yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come through You'll never be alone, I'll be there for you I'll be there, yeah, yeah, I'll be there for you I'll be there, yeah, yeah, I'll be there for you Oh, I say, yeah, yeah, I've got enough love for two You'll never be alone, I'll be there for you Over the bed, I'll be there when you're lost in the darkness. I'll be there, I'll be there when your heart is breaking. You'll never be alone, I'll be there for you. I'll be there, yeah, yeah, I'll be there for you. I'll be there. 
got nothing left to do You'll never be alone, I'll be there for you I'll be there when your tears are falling I'll be there, can't you hear me calling? I'll be there when your heart is breaking You'll never be alone, I'll be there for you I'll be there for you I'll be there for you. You'll never be alone. I'll be there for you. I'll be there for you. I'll be there for you. You'll never be alone. I'll be there for you. That was amazing, Phoebe. And the bus talked to starting a, a singing competition at work, and I'd just like to say that Phoebe's on my team. Um, I'll now invite the Vice-Chancellor and President, Professor Scott Bowman, to commence the conferring of awards. Would all graduands please stand? And the PhD ones. And please smile. <laughs> Chancellor, as Vice Chancellor of Charles Darwin University, I submit to you candidates for the awards as set out in this official list of graduands. I certify that those listed have satisfied the requirements for the award of those degrees, diplomas, and certificates. As Chancellor of Charles Darwin University, I hereby admit to their respective awards the candidates whose names appear in the official list of graduates. Congratulations, one and all. It's a really huge achievement, and uh, I'll say some further words later in the ceremony, but congratulations, well done. Family and friends, please, big round of applause to our graduates. Graduates, please take your seats. I now call upon the Dean of the College of Engineering, IT and Environment, Professor David Young, to present the graduates from his college. Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, graduates, families, friends and colleagues, I'm very pleased to celebrate the achievements of the students graduating from programs in the College of Engineering, Information Technology and Environment. This college brings together degree education in the three eponymous disciplines and vocational training in the trades and primary industries. We work hard to prepare students for careers designed to meet the needs of employers and the community. Our programs are professionally accredited and many are available internally and externally to cater for the diverse needs of our student population. Today we are celebrating your success it is time to reflect on what you have achieved and where you might be going next. Hopefully your time at CDU has been just one step in your learning journey and some of you might return in the future to undertake further studies. I would like to offer my heartfelt congratulations to all graduates. This is an important milestone in your careers and I hope the programs you have successfully completed will serve you well in the next phase of your life. To your family, friends and employers who have supported you during your studies, I also offer my thanks. I share their pride in your achievements and I acknowledge the important part they have played in your success. Please enjoy this day. Thank you. <clears throat> Chancellor. In my capacity as Dean of the College of Engineering, IT and the Environment, I present to you 
for the award of Certificate Two in Conservation and Land Management, Amro Jandamir. <laughs> Martin Liddy. Ralph Ro Rodriguez Nanjumeri. <laughs> Malcolm Nungo. <laughs> Clayton Nanjumeri. <laughs> Axel Nanjumeri. Jack Namani. <laughs> and Marmo. <laughs> Certificate three in electrotechnology electrician. No? Liam McDonald. <laughs> Liam McDonald. <laughs> Ronaldo Javier Valentin. Certificate three in engineering, fabrication, trade, Joshua Ben Krugs. <laughs> Certificate three in engineering, mechanical, trade, Dushanta Alutka. <laughs> Certificate three in light vehicle, mechanical, technology, Dananha. Certificate three in plumbing, Benjamin James Mashford. <laughs> Certificate four in computer systems technology, John Hoskins. <laughs> Undergraduate certificate, science, engineering and technology, Jazia Amanda. Okay, <laughs> Diploma of Network Engineering, Shah Mohammed Manwa Hossein. <laughs> Associate Degree of Engineering, Chachura Kavisha Sarachandra Gabadage. Bachelor of Computer Science, Zachary Daniel Sainer. <laughs> Declan Smythe. <laughs> Yuen Hao Jung. Bachelor of Engineering, Panayotis Hatziv Al Samas. <laughs> Bachelor of Engineering Honours, Michelle Clements. G. <laughs> Watmuni Chandu Al Mulka de Silva.
Albert Fernando. Matthew Kevin Greenwood. Deepak Pendi. Xuan Vin Tam. Bachelor of Engineering Science, William McClay. <laughs> Bachelor of Environmental Science, Sarah Ann Caldo. <laughs> Angelina Dawn Trinica. Bachelor of Information Technology, Robin Baton. Aaron Chin. Adrian Finnis. Snea Gautam. <laughs> Hao Chen Han. <laughs> Mahedi Hassan. Eric Hung. <laughs> Mohammed Taha Hussain. <laughs> Maaz Elias. Navneet Kaur. <laughs> Janish Ali. <laughs> Rinkal Kumar Patel. Misery Ramatula <laughs> Muhammad Nazrul Islam Sani <laughs> Mohad Sawar. Fahan Shakil. <laughs> Shaharia Shanto. <laughs> Alish Shretta. <laughs> Rabindra Shastra. Sakar Shrestha. <laughs> Anthony Tai. <laughs> Bachelor of Science, Brinda Magan. Galatiani Mostris. <laughs> B 
Brandon Ruth Turner. Bachelor of Science Honours with First Class Honours and Certificate Two in Maritime Operations, Julia Meredith Constance. <laughs> Master of Engineering, Venkata Sai Manisanka Bandaru. Mahmoudul Hassan. <laughs> Lee Jo John. <laughs> Sreya Maharajan. Sandeep Naim. <laughs> Kalpana Pandi. <laughs> Jigar Patel. Adil Shahzad. <laughs> Farrar Shakarchi. <laughs> Laiba Sahail. Master of Environmental Management, Tenvi Patel. <laughs> Jahani Mahabushi Raka Kurana Raka Kurana Mudi Salage. <laughs> Thank you. Sasmita Ranabhat. <laughs> Shah Takanti Vadivir. <laughs> Master of Information Technology, Cyber Security, Tusli Bharati. Rajan Gautam. <laughs> Peter Hand. <laughs> Sujana Casey. Virat Lama. <laughs> Vivek Powdell. <laughs> Rupin Derjit Kaur. Digita Shrestha. <laughs> Ananda Tiwari. <laughs> Master of Information Technology, Information Systems and Data Science. Tisari Imalka Bamun Singa Aratijia. Leonard Costa. (Applause) 
Sarah Dachau. Farika Haag. Van Tang Huang. Nalayap Ko. <clears throat> Kirtan Singh. <laughs> Pravaka Panta. <laughs> Auroran Suntaran Lingam. Master of Information Technology, Software Engineering, Srijana Bandari. <laughs> Suraj Gurung. <laughs> Imran Deep Kaur. Hung Lee at Liu. Kyu Kwe Tan Nguyen. Thank you. Alpha Yaiban Alab Hai Polra. Labin Sapkota. <laughs> Chao Yue Yang. <laughs> Undergraduate Certificate, Science, Engineering and Technology, Jasia Amando. <laughs> Chancellor, that concludes the graduate presentation for the College of Engineering, IT and Environment. I now call upon the Dean of the College of Nursing and Midwifery, Professor Karen Francis, to present the graduates from her college. Vice-Chancellor, graduates, families, friends and colleagues. Welcome to Charles Darwin University. On behalf of the staff in the College of Nursing and Midwifery, I want to thank you for the support and encouragement that you have provided, enabling us to gather today to celebrate the achievements of our graduating students. The College of Nursing and Midwifery currently teaches approximately 5,500 students and offers a range of undergraduate professionally accredited courses to prepare nurses and midwives to graduate for practice and a number of graduate academic courses for practicing health professionals seeking to specialise in areas of practice including mental health, renal care, dementia, child and family health and primary health care. The College of Nursing and Midwifery aspires to produce excellent graduates who will make a difference and become the next generation of health professionals, health professional leaders in their chosen areas of practice. The College of Nursing and Midwifery academic staff contribute to the expansion of knowledge and to strengthening practice through the supervision of research students at honours, masters and doctoral levels. Our staff lead and participate in high impact research that makes a difference to the lives of the people in the Northern Territory, Australia and internationally. For example, 
our research endeavours in the fields of primary health care, mental health, cancer and chronic conditions are realising innovative non-pharmacological interventions to treat people living with post-traumatic stress and breast cancer. The Molly Wadaduga Research Centre is making a significant contribution to health outcomes for Aboriginal women and babies by reducing preterm birth rates. Our staff who are undertaking research in the fields of learning and teaching are contributing to innovations in curriculum, understanding learning styles of students and approaches to simulated learning that is influencing the design of our simulated environments in which students learn and practice skill sets and apply the knowledge ultimately ensuring they are well prepared for practice as registered nurses and midwives. The College of Nursing and Midwifery academic staff are dedicated, hardworking and student focused. As a result of their efforts, our courses are offering, offered using modalities of delivery that cater to the needs of our students who are drawn from across the country and internationally. The College of Nursing and Midwifery is focused on innovating curriculum that we agree is required to ensure our graduates leave us with a thirst for knowledge and a lifetime commitment to learning. Studying at Charles Darwin University means you are part of a community of scholars that engage with the latest online learning technologies and benefit from clinical teaching in actual healthcare settings and clinical training suites located across Australia in places including Darwin, Alice Springs, Sydney, Brisbane, Perth and Melbourne. Our students gain a wealth of experience during their time with us, including the opportunity to undertake professional experience placements in a variety of settings, including very remote areas, regional and rural communities, as well as in some of the country's largest and busiest hospitals and health services in Australia. In addition to their studies and attending clinical simulation blocks and professional experience places, often very far from their homes, many of our students also work and look after families. Despite the challenges that they face to meet the demands of daily living and undertaking their studies, graduates here today have completed their courses. Well done. It's been quite the journey. We trust, graduates, you leave Charles Darwin University with the skills and experiences you need as you move forward into an ever-changing world where you will need to adapt to new problems and new ways of delivering health services. Keep learning and being open to new ideas and embrace new opportunities as they come your way. You will reap the rewards of your academic journey through contributing positively to the services of others. Today is your day, a time to look back on the last few years at all that you have accomplished and also a realisation that the tough times were worth it. Remember to and acknowledge all those who have supported you on your journey, your families, your friends, your colleagues and all those who have contributed to your learning. We in the College of Nursing and Midwifery are proud of your achievements. On behalf of my colleagues, I congratulate you all and trust that you will enjoy a day of celebration that you will remember for a very long time. Thank you. <clears throat> Chancellor, in my capacity as Dean of the College of Nursing and Midwifery, I present to you for the award of Diploma of Health, Megan Hughes. Diploma of Nursing, Tanasta Natasha Lucas. <laughs> oh, not, not the, sorry. Okay, Bachelor of Nursing, Nikki Lee Ald. <laughs> Felicia Violet Byrne. <laughs> I 
I, I'm sorry, I think I said nursing. It should be Bachelor of Midwifery. My apologies. Namana Elizabeth Lasika. Amy Louise McDonald. Andrea Victoria Wright. Now I've got it right this time. Bachelor of Nursing, Christian Abad. <laughs> Vivian Abola Rena. <laughs> Kamya Abraham. Esther Yuzami Ajiki. <laughs> A Kung Festus A Roller. <laughs> Shirley Marie Baker. Ruth Bander. <laughs> Papania Banina Subeti. <laughs> Dania Chavez Bastian. Christina Blackman. <laughs> Talasha Bud Hal Falky. <laughs> Pascal Wansforo Bakura. Vanessa Bawala. <laughs> Progi Simpaya Chatu Luka. <laughs> Anu Chalagan Dahal. Ling Chin Christopher Agonea Chuka Promise Lika Toki Chuwa Iki Cody Cooper. <laughs> Matthew Robert Davy. <laughs> Kimberly Ann Davis. Alana Renee De Bono. <laughs> Dendup Demma. <laughs> Sam 
Sandani Hassanda D1 Arara Raya. Christine Tabat Dominic. Lucy Emma Dussenberg. Madeline Elizabeth Elmsmore. Jordan Espinosa. Benetta Fisher. Sophie Margaret Forrest. Bajaya Gamia Canal. Manisha Geary. Durga Garang. Grace Alexandra Hallowell. Laura Ann Hicks. Ramil Escano Hidalgo. Jacinta Dawn Hughes. Kirsty Lee Hutley. Evangel Abeki Ibi Kalechi. Christy James. Miranda Michelle Jan. Kat Kinnelan. Sheet Kerr <laughs> Casey <laughs> Pabrita Casey Dungana Christina Olga Kelly. <laughs> Sunita Corral. <laughs> Sarah Ja Kia Orala. Kamal Preet Kaur. <laughs> Manisha Kamwa.
Julia Mary Ann Labaran. Leone Bottle Laduan. T. Nokha Teresa Lee. Kim Long. Alain Irish Manharis. <laughs> Jerusalem Marcelino. <laughs> Lisa Massey. Jessica Mitchell. <laughs> Alison Jane Morrissey. <laughs> Netse Hilda Moyo. Mpofu <laughs> Michael Francis Muldowney <laughs> Austin Mun Manondo Cynthia Manondo. <laughs> Taro Ashi Elena Mutenza. <laughs> Yvonne Mutana Musama. Erika Nakano. <laughs> Mayan Christopher May Ni He Di He. <laughs> Shubashia Nepal. Rika Nupain Bandari. <laughs> Winfred Wang Echi Nuguni. Jean Pierre Nassayan. <laughs> Irish Rochelle Ocampo. <laughs> Teresa Aderi. Hayley Judith O'Donoghue. <laughs> Sam Michael Osborne.
Nikuru Mediax Isuji. Aswin Bijou. Tracy Lee Palmer. Anu Palmer Pandey. Alina Paskukin. Deval Darpin Patel. Malawa Achini Virandi Rusini Pereira. Lauren Kate Puka. Kelsey Lynette Pocock. Aditi Pockerell. Christopher Portishoe. Deepa Podell. Lao Ita Rani. Rachel Megan Renfrey. Sabita Ramel Kendall. Jake Roberts. Aaron Chris Romero. Emma Claire Rothwell. Jessica Kayleen Ruffley. <laughs> Suzanne Russell. <laughs> Kelly Ryan. Natasha Emma Saunders. Bernadette Sepulveda. Ria Shri Shahi. Meryn Shaju. <laughs> Kremita Shakya. <laughs> Melissa May Malango Sharma.
Sham Sun Aha Shaman. Ajita Shesta. Kalesh Shesta. Ria Shesta. Hebus Yusuf Shuri. <laughs> Suzanne Tracy Simonato. <laughs> Praya Gomden Singh. Aretha Shures. <laughs> Clifford John Tenecchio. <laughs> Calvin Ting. Tishka Tawari. <laughs> Claudia Mary Tung. <laughs> Michelle Gade Valadi. Lawrence Joshua Veray. Kate Wallace. Janaki Achala Wick Gram Asinghi Wa Tiki KTE. Ashley West, <laughs> Kirsty Witten, <laughs> Natalie Claire Wildig. Vanilla, Sophia Zing Jenny. <laughs> Bachelor of Nursing and Diploma of Child, Youth and Family Intervention, Joyce Oila Hakem. Graduate Certificate in Clinical Nursing, Shamila Selena Devi. <laughs> Graduate Certificate of Health Services Management, Priya Balakrishnan. Graduate Diploma in Clinical Nursing, Reach Anyon Cott. <laughs> Master of Clinical Nursing, Ta Kwong Nugent. <laughs> Master 
Master of Nursing, Narissa Ellen Tarman. Chancellor, that concludes the graduate procession for the College of Nursing and Midwifery. I now call upon Associate Director for Research at the Menzies School of Health Research, Associate Professor Heidi Smith Vaughan, to present the graduates. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to start by acknowledging the Larrakia people, the custodians of these beautiful lands and seas where we're meeting today. And may I pay my respect to their elders, past and present, and acknowledge Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples from all lands here today. Chancellor, distinguished guests, graduates, and all who are present for this important occasion. Menzies School of Health Research is one of Australia's leading medical research institutes a founding partner of Charles Darwin University. We are dedicated to improving the health and well-being of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and are global leaders in tropical health research. We are delivering excellence in health sciences training and pastoral care by creating pathways from vet and schools to PhDs and beyond to grow the regional and remote health work workforce here in the Northern Territory. At Menzies, we work to understand the causes of disparities in health the factors driving inequitable access to healthcare, and to generate evidence on how to improve health and well-being. I'm Pro Associate Professor Heidi Smith Vaughan, and I'm Associate Director for, for Research at Menzies. I've had the very great honour of working at Menzies since 1990, and I'm intentional about creating pathways, providing opportunities, and growing capacity in regional and remote Northern Territory. Today, I'm excited to present Menzies graduates um, with graduate certificates and diplomas, masters and PhDs. Why do we learn? Why do we do high degrees? We learn so that we can serve our community. Each of you is tackling inequity in different and important ways. We also learn so that we can teach, and I look forward to seeing the impact that each of you has on the next generation of health researchers. It takes courage and bravery to aim optimistically at an uncertain future. So today, I'm honoured to witness and be part of this graduation ceremony. Today, we recognise true leaders who have had and will continue to have a profound impact, sharing knowledge and growing capacity in health issues that matter here in our society. Thank you, Chancellor. <laughs> Chancellor, in my capacity as Associate Director for Research at Menzies School of Health Research, I present to you for the award of Certificate Two in Community Health Research, Peter John Henwood. <laughs> the Graduate Certificate of Infectious Disease Prevention and Control, Lois Kristen Abria. The Graduate Diploma in Public Health, Annette Gay Cottrell. And the Master of Public Health, Maria Katrina McCutcheon. Chancellor, that concludes the presentation of coursework graduates from Menzies School of Health Research. I now present the doctorate graduates from Menzies School of Health Research. To be awarded a Doctor of Philosophy or PhD, students must have conducted extensive, rigorous and innovative research on a significant issue, submitted a thesis comprising up to 100,000 words, communicated the results widely, and successfully completed training on research integrity, research methods, research communication, and career skills. Today, the following candidates have met these demanding criteria. Chancellor, I present to you Jemima Beesbath.
Jemima holds a Bachelor of Science and a Bachelor of Teaching from Northern Territory University for their thesis titled, Vaccine Selective Pressures on the Microbiology of Hepatitis Media in Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander Children in Northern Australia, as supervised by Professor Amanda Leach. I now present to you Dr. Jemima Beesbath. Chancellor, I present to you Audra Karen DeWitt. <laughs> Audra holds a Master of Public Health from the University of Queensland, a Graduate Certificate in Health Sciences, Health Promotion, and a Bachelor of Nursing from Queensland University of Technology. For their thesis titled, Factors and Practices that Enhance Delivery of Quality Cancer Care for Indigenous Australians Across Primary Health Care and Hospital Settings in Queensland as supervised by Dr. Francis Cunningham, I now present to you Dr. Audra Karen DeWitt. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you Victoria Ann Kerrigan. Victoria holds a Master of International and Community Devel Development from Deakin University and a Bachelor of Arts Communications from Charles Sturt, Univers Charles Sturt University. For their thesis titled, Bachi Gum Dilba, Good Talk Medicine, Improving Culturally Safe Communication Between Doctors and Aboriginal Patients in the Northern Territory of Australia, as supervised by Professor Anna Relf, I now present to you Dr. Victoria Anne Kerrigan. Chancellor, I present to you Alison Francis Laycock. Alison <laughs> holds a Bachelor of Fine Art from Northern Territory University, a Bachelor of Education, and a Diploma of Teaching from South Australian College of the Arts and Education. For their thesis titled, The Developmental Evaluation of a Knowledge Translation Project in Indigenous Primary Healthcare Quality Improvement, as supervised by Professor Ross Bailey, I now present to you Dr. Alison Francis Laycock. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you Lo Dr. Uh, Laurel Teo. Laurel holds a Bachelor of Science Medicine and a Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery from the University of New South Wales. For their thesis titled, Acute Asthma Exacerbations and the Recovery Phase in Children, as supervised by Professor Anne Chang, I now present to you Dr. Laurel Teo. <laughs> Chancellor. I present to you Angela Therese Titmus. <laughs> Angela holds a Master of Public Health, a Bachelor of Medi Medicine's Bachelor of Surgery Honours, and a Bachelor of Science Medicine Honours from the University of New South Wales. For their thesis titled, Understanding Type 2 Diabetes Among Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Youth in Northern Australia and Assessing the Child Health Impact of Maternal Diabetes, as supervised by Professor Louise Maple Brown, I now present to you Dr. Angela Therese Titmus. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you Anna Wood. <laughs> Anna holds a Fellow of the Royal Australian College of Physicians a Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery from the University of Sydney, and a Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Commerce from the University of Melbourne. For their thesis titled, Diabetes and Cardiovascular Risk Among Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Women and Non-Indigenous Women After a Pregnancy Complicated by Hypoglycemia, Identifying Strengths and Gaps in Improving Outcomes, as supervised by Professor Louise Maple Brown, I now present to you Dr. Anna Wood.
Chancellor, that concludes the presentation of the Menzies School of Health Research. I now call upon the Pro Vice Chancellor of Research and Innovation, Professor Steve Rogers, to present their CDU doctoral graduates. Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, Dr. Auntie B, ladies and gentlemen, graduates, and my CDU colleagues. A Doctor of Philosophy, or PhD, is the highest postgraduate qualification that can be awarded in academic study. A PhD involves an in-depth, focused research conducted over an extended period of three to five years, or in the case of part-time students, up to 10 years. The research outcomes presented as a thesis are assessed by a panel of national and international academic experts who determine whether the research delivers an original and significant contribution to knowledge in the particular field of study. The candidates graduating today have met these very demanding criteria. Chancellor, in my capacity as Pro Vice Chancellor Research and Innovation, I present to you Sarah Nicole Bonney. Sarah holds a Bachelor of Science from the Australian National University and a Bachelor of Science Honours from Charles Darwin University. For their thesis titled, Ants as the Little Things that Run the World, Ecological Responses to the Suppression of a Dominant Faunal Group in an Australian Savannah, as supervised by Professor Alan Anderson, I now present to you Dr. Sarah Nicole Bonney. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you Simon Crace. Simon holds a Master of Engineering, Systems Engineering from the University of South Australia, a Graduate Certificate in Scientific Leadership from the University of Melbourne, a Bachelor of Engineering Honours, Electrical and Electronic, and a Bachelor of Science, Mathematical and Computer Science from the University of Adelaide. For their thesis titled, Quantified Cluster Analysis Techniques, for infrared spectroscopy as, present, as supervised by Professor Suresh Tanadal, I now present to you Dr. Simon Crace. <clears throat> Chancellor, I present to you Shandala Cole Loving. Okay, can I carry on? <laughs> Shandala holds a Bachelor of Social Science from California Polytechnic State University and a Master of Science from the University of Newcastle. For their thesis titled, Integrating Telemetry, Remote Sensing and Landscape Genetics for Assessing Feral Pig, Sus Scrofa, Movement Ecology, as supervised by Professor Hamish Campbell, I now present to you Dr. Shandala Cole Loving. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you Mike Milosius. Mike holds a Bachelor of Mike holds a Bachelor of Science Honours from the University of Melbourne. 
For their thesis titled Modeling the Implications of Sea Level Rise on Low-Lying Wetlands of Northern Territory Australia, as supervised by Professor Charlie Fairfield, I now present to you Dr. Mike Milosius. Chancellor, that concludes the presentation of the PhD awards. And well done everyone, you're hanging in there, we're nearly done. Let's just have one enormous round of applause for all of our graduates today. Now to my favorite piece. Um, this is my favorite part of the ceremony. I'd like to welcome Dagita Shrestha, who was highly recommended by the College of Engineering, IT and Environment, one of our graduates today who will speak on behalf of the graduating cohort, Dagita. Thank you, Mum. A very great afternoon to our honorable minister for <laughs> Corporate and Digital Development, Nari Akit, our Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, my fellow colleagues, and all the loved ones present in this room today. I'm Digita Sresta, currently am finally graduated from Masters in IT Cybersecurity. It is an immense pleasure for me to be, the, to be representing the graduates and speak on behalf of all of my fellow colleagues. Firstly, I would like to start by acknowledging the country that we are standing on today, the Larakia Nation. I would like to pay my respect to the traditional custodians of this land we are standing on today, to their past, present, and emerging. Next, I would also like to um, congratulate all the graduates who have been, like, let's give a round of applause, everyone. All of us deserve a huge round of applause. So, Congratulations to all of us. We've worked really hard, and this is the time to rip off, right? And yeah, moving on, I would like to thank our CDU, Charlestown University, for giving us a platform to learn, grow, upskill, and also gain the knowledge as well. Thank you to all the professors for your continuous support throughout these two years of journey, starting from Dr. Sami, Dr. Varani Dharan, Dr. Mamun, Freezer, Cherry, Charles, CDU Career Center, and also everyone who's been supporting us directly and indirectly. Being an international student and coming to Australia with high ambition of achieving something and pursuing my dreams and goals of becoming a better person, making my parents proud of me, and not knowing where to go and what would be a better decision for me, I am coming to Sydney when I was 18 back in 2016. I did my Certificate 3, Certificate 4, Diploma and Bachelor's in IT in Network Security in Sydney at TAFE, New South Wales. Then, I took a major decision that changed my life. I thought of Council of Sydney and a place where I knew no one, where I can create my self-identity by myself seeking for more opportunities and for my further study, I came to this small yet beautiful city called Darwin to study masters in IT at Charles Darwin University. In the very beginning, it was pretty challenging for me because especially the weather was very challenging. Coming straight from seven degree to 27 degree, it was pretty hard for me, but yeah. I started my master's degree on 2020, and it definitely was a great opportunity for me to be studying on the, one of the finest universities of Australia. I was super impressed with the teaching methods of the professors. Since day one, I always felt that I was part of CDU, and I'm very much proud of that. I made new friends, got to know about the lifestyle over here in Darwin, and this place was very welcoming. For me, myself being an extrovert, I got a chance to be around beautiful people who were my classmates, and today we are graduating together. It's my pleasure for me to be sharing this stage together. Being a full-time student and working part-time, likewise being involved in community activities, definitely, there were lots of challenges on time management, and not knowing what to do 
where to go, and why am I doing what am I doing. But the continuous support of my parents, my beloved husband, professors, my mentor, and my colleagues, I've been able to be here where I am today. I've, I'm all, I've always been keen to be around multicultural environment, and I can never think that there is any other better place than CDU for having the multicultural environment, and I'm very much thankful of that. Despite having English as my second language and Australia as my second home, I've never felt any barrier or any discrimination. The professors were more than ready to help me if I asked any questions. If I asked for any available opportunities, they were always ready to support me and engage the students on social activities, due to which we were also learning about the team, being able to do more networking and explore ourselves as well. When I was on my first semester, I still remember that um, lots of the alumni of CDU and also my seniors, they used to say that there is a great event called CDU IT Code Fair, which is huge and massive. And on the very first semester, I participated on it and saw how CDU thinks about students and becoming a bridge in between the students and industry professionals. That time, I was able to see everyone striving beyond and above with their projects and to become better. I also got a chance to be on the speed dating interview as well. On giving the interview, I got to see the perspective on how professional interview looked like. And next year, on my last, sem on my last semester, I was able to participate on two of the competitions and won both of the competition as winner. And not only that, but I was also selected as the panel speaker on CDU IT Code Fair, and it was such a privilege for me. I often heard from many students that to land on a professional IT career, you either have to become a permanent resident or Australian citizen. That time, I was telling myself that I will be working on IT while I'm on my student phase, no matter what improvements I have to do to myself. And I remember my mentor mentioning me um, that Digita, you first have to become the person you want to be, to um, and you need to do what you need to do to have the result that you want to have. I always had that triggered on my mind, so I had promised myself that I will definitely work on myself, but I will jumpstart my corporate career on my dream company when I'm on my student phase. So I wrote on my notebook that I work at NEC, I'm getting good paid. I exactly can't remember how many times I wrote that, but I kept on writing every day. And on the second last semester, before the second last semester actually, what started, I got the part-time role at NEC as service desk level and service desk analyst level two. And moving on from service desk analyst to EUC engineer, and now working as graduate network engineer, it really means a lot to me because this is what I had dreamt of which is why I studied network security. So folks, I just wanted to address that we should never give up on our dreams, no matter whatever people will say, until and unless we have faith and believe on ourselves. And being a part of CDU IT Student Association, I started volunteering and slowly started becoming the master of ceremony, also known as MC. And while I was a student, I got chance to become the MC on many different events, such as Software Freedom Day, Australian Information Security Association's Cybersecurity Conference, thanks to Professor Varani, Harmony Food Festival, and also I was awarded as the CDU Women Collective for Innovation and Change finalist. Not only that, during my study here, I've learned so much, um, not only about the core subject units, but also learned how to wear different hats on different situations, making sure that my priorities would not hamper my studies, balancing the full-time study with part-time work, focusing on personal growth, and participating and being involved on social activities. So I've always focused on managing everything together, along with my studies, not compromising my studies, because my parents have worked so hard for that. And these two past years have been very precious for me, because I've tried to make most out of this time and become a better version of myself every day, starting with the positive self-talk, 
One of the positive self-talk that I always did was to see my parents over here with me, and I've got my mom standing, sitting down over there. After six and a half years, I got to meet her today, and my dad might be watching the video on the live somewhere. I miss you, and my brother too, so <clears throat> thank you very much to my parents, to my family, for making me an independent lady, passing me the core, core values, and also letting me pursue my dreams without any distraction or any disruption at all. Thank you very much for that. One more person without whose support I wouldn't see myself standing over here is my beloved husband, Sandeep. I've always heard that there is a woman behind every man's success, but for me, it was him behind my every success. Thank you very much for everything, and I love you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Lastly, I would like to congratulate to all my fellow colleagues who may have been through somehow similar journey of mine or maybe different, but being able to go through thicks and thins and being graduated from one of the most reputed University of Australia, Charles Darwin University. So it is a very precious day for all of us. So let's cheer and enjoy. Now it is time for us to give it back to the community and pay it, pay it forward because we make CDU, right? And finally, all the very best and may God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dagita. Never give up on your dreams or your passwords, right? Um, please accept these flowers as a token of our appreciation. Thank you so much for speaking with us today. I now call upon the Chancellor to deliver the charge to graduates. Okay, fantastic. <clears throat> what a uh, uplifting, uh, emotional celebration of education, teaching, learning, knowledge. It really has been inspirational to see all of those wonderful young people and some not so young people uh, achieving great success. And Dagita, what a wonderful way to finish the ceremony. Uh, your talk just now was, was inspirational. And I was sitting there thinking your, your comments about coming to Darwin, not knowing what this place would be like apart from it's hot, and the wonderful multicultural city that this is, the wonderful multicultural university that this is. This is such a great part of, of who we are and where we are, such a, an amazing place to live, work, learn. And uh, it was a, a wonderful, wonderful speech. And I was thinking, Nagita, uh, Dagita telling her story, just looking at all of you students there, you've all got similar stories that you could tell. And I'm very confident that you will move out into the world and the world is gonna be a better place as a result of you putting into practice everything that you've learned here over the last few years. And uh, I certainly encourage you to, to join the alumni of C CDU. Uh, if you're moving away from the Northern Territory, please take a piece of the Territory with you. Always be ambassadors for the Territory, and I hope uh, all of you or some of you will come back and study with us again into the future. So, graduates, can you please stand? Okay. As newly conferred graduates of Charles Darwin University, it's at this stage of the proceedings that we conduct a turning of the tassel ceremony. This is a long-standing university tradition that officially symbolizes your transition from graduand to graduate of Charles Darwin University. Please now move your tassel from the right side of the mortarboard to your left and give yourselves a huge round of applause. Congratulations. <laughs> I charge you as graduates to maintain a commitment to lifelong learning, to strive for truth, integrity and compassion, to contribute to your chosen profession and by the application of your abilities to support and nurture the communities that you are part of. I charge with you to take with you the spirit and resilience of the Northern Territory, 
walk softly but proudly in the knowledge of your profession. May your achievements bring honour to your university, Charles Darwin University, your chosen profession and to yourself. Good luck, my very best wishes going forward for whatever uh, life is going to hold for you. And ladies and gentlemen, please give these marvellous graduates a final last round of applause. Thank you. The graduation ceremony is drawing to a close and our graduates are graduates. Thank you family and friends for joining us in this celebration today and for the support you've shown to our graduates over the months and years of their study. A last word of appreciation goes to the very committed and hardworking staff at this university who teach, guide and support CDU students every day. Finally. Finally, let me, add, let me add my own congratulations to the graduates. We will follow your future careers with interest. I wish you every success and happiness in the future. Thank you. Every new day begins with a choice. The choice to make time for what really matters. To use every opportunity to work toward our goals. And to make every day count. Once we committed, we knew it was possible. Today is a time to celebrate and reflect on what we achieved. It wasn't always easy. We had our doubts. And the juggle seemed impossible. The early mornings and the late nights. When the inspiration was not there. The search for perfection. We just wanted to get it right. But for every challenge faced, we always had the end in sight. We found our inner strength and determination. We found support along the way. We used perseverance and passion to reach our potential. comes down to this moment. A feeling that will live with us forever. To share with the ones who've inspired us. To become the person we were meant to be. Academic procession will now form a guard of honour for our newest university graduates. And then the Chancellor and Vice Chancellor hope you'll join them in the concourse for light refreshments. Please now stand until the academic procession has left the hall.